Thank you, glory, hallelujah. Thank you for another day, another year. Oh my God, my God. Yes, you have to forgive me because to me this is personal. <laughs> oh my God, yes. But he has been so good to me. Yes, he has brought us through another year. Another year. Just think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. All that we have endured through this year, the Lord has watched over us, has given us a, another chance, another opportunity this year to try to get right what we did not do last year. Those are blessings. Blessings the Lord is bestowing upon us. Lord, as we come uh, this day, this morning in the beauty of holiness we come lord god leaning trusting depending on your everlasting glorious wonderful arms because you are a god who sits high but you look low you know all things and all things you know you have all divine wisdom and power in the palm of your hand and and who are we to question we come out here this day giving you all that is due to you because you have blessed us from one degree to another degree. You have taken us higher and higher and higher into the heavenly realm of secrets that you have in store for us. Because that's why we're here to give you the glory this morning. So we ask Lord God that you would let the power from on high, the power of your Holy Spirit, let it flow, let it move, let it come in, let it dictate the terms in which you would have us to go. We ask, Lord God, that you bless each and every one that is assembled here, those that are on their way. Use them, Lord God. Oh, Lord, let our eyes be open so that we can see. Let our ears hear what you have to say through us, through the word of God. We ask, Lord God, that you would anoint and touch the man of God. Stand him up on every side, Lord. Yes, Lord. You give him a fresh anointing. And, Lord, we be so mindful not to forget this is all about you. It's not about us. So, Lord, as we come this day, Lord Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify, we glorify your holy name because you is worthy of all exaltations. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. But truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad therein. Amen. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you all. Amen. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Jesus, we're still here, kept by the fire. 
You're by the blood, and we thank you. We thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercy, your unmerited favor, even now. We thank you for the dawning of a brand new day, a brand new week, a brand new year. We thank you, because when we look back over our lives, you've been for us, and we say thank you this morning. Thank you again and again and again. We praise your name. Thank you that you loaded us daily with your benefits. Asking a special anointing upon this service this morning, Lord Jesus, that you come and inundate this service with your presence. That you anoint the choir and the musicians that play the songs of Zion. Anoint these ushers that greet your people to come to the door. And then anoint your man servant with a word fresh from on high. Send the word this morning. Save, heal, deliver, strengthen, restore. New beginnings, even now. But just don't just stop by here, Lord Jesus. Remember those in sick rooms, in nursing homes, in rehab. Those that are walking aimlessly outside these walls. They know you're not in the part of their sin. Send your word that saves from the least to the greatest. And we'll be covered to give your name praise, glory, and honor. For it all belongs to you. And we ask it in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Hymn number 481, Another Year is Dawning. Shall we stand and join it with the choir? Another year is dawning.
the as the musicians play that that ought to be our prayer for this year not my will but thy will be done can I say it again not my will but thy will be done consecration means that we're emptying ourselves and we're allowing the Lord to fill us up You ought not to sing it unless you really want to be consecrated. So for those who want to be consecrated, let us sing. Consecrate, consecrate me, Lord. Consecrate me, Lord. Consecrate me to do that. Oh, consecrate me, Lord, consecrate me, Lord, consecrate me to do thy, come on, say it one more time, oh, consecrate, consecrate me, Lord. Consecrate me, Lord. Consecrate me to do thy will. Oh, consecrate me, Lord. Consecrate As we continue our studies in the book of Revelation, that 14th chapter this morning, the first five verses, Revelation, that 14th chapter, we can continue our study. And you find these words recorded starting at verse 1. It says, and I, and I looked, and lo, a lamb stood in Mount Zion, and with him 140 and 4,000, having his father's name written in their forehead. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harps, harping with their harps. And they sang as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders and no man could learn that song but the 140 and 4,000 which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with woman for they were virgins. They are, they are they which follow the Lamb wheresoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruit unto God and to the Lamb. Verse 5, And in their mouth was found no guile, for they were without fault before the throne of God. The word of God to his people on this great day. Amen. share button to share with somebody let them know the Nazarene is on there you're looking for 
blessing on this morning. How many have came out this morning on this first day of 20 and 23 seeking a blessing? Amen. 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 Just glad to be up in the house again. Amen. At this time, we ask the ushers to prepare themselves for our first offering. Of the morning. This is not a main offering. This is not a benevolence offering. The one we raise for those who are less fortunate than we ourselves. And this anointed choir along with the musicians will lead us in song. Oh, 
had anybody's testimony here this morning, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, where would I be? And then they started out with he's brought us from a mighty, mighty long way. Thank you, choir musicians. Let's get the Lord a hand praise for our music department this morning. Starting the year off with if he had not been for the Lord, he was on my side. And then he's brought me from a mighty, 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 mighty long way. Amen. At this time, we ask you to turn your attention to our media screens for our church related news, news that you can use and immediately following that, the pastor of the First Nazarene Baptist Church, becoming great, I guess, Dr. Daheem T. Watson. Amen. There will be no men's huddle this Saturday. The men will meet again, weather permitting, on Saturday, February 4th. Happy birthday to everyone born in the month of January. First Nazarene is on the airwaves twice a week. Sunday, 7.30 a.m. with Sunday morning inspiration on Philly's favor, 100.7 FM. Wednesday afternoon, 1 p.m. with the new Nazarene Hour on WTMR, 800 on your AM dial. Sunday school begins 9.30 in the chapel. Next week's Sunday school lesson, Blessing of Forgiveness and New Life. This worship experience begins promptly at 10.30 in person, Facebook and YouTube Live and on the teleconference live. If you desire to fellowship with us in person, a mask is mandatory, covering your nose and mouth at all times. Men and Women's Bible Study is Wednesday, 6 p.m. The ladies can also participate on Zoom. 
the Zoom ID number is 548-152-8913. Midweek worship is Wednesday, 7 p.m. We stream live on Facebook and YouTube Sunday mornings and Wednesday evenings. Find us on Facebook at First Nazarene Baptist Church Camden. Like, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel, First Nazarene Baptist Church. Follow us on Twitter at FNBC New Jersey using the hashtag FNBC. Stay connected to this experience on Instagram at First Nazarene Baptist Church. Receive cell phone alerts, reminders, and updates on First Nazarene events and services by texting keyword Nazarene to 833-467-1866. This system will also be used to notify you if service has to be delayed or canceled due to inclement weather. If you're worshiping with us in person or on social media and would like to be a blessing to the First Nazarene Ministry, our cash app address is dollar sign FNBC1500. Locate us on Give the Five at First Nazarene Baptist Church or by way of our website. FNBCC.org. As part of your daily prayers, please remember to include Pastor Watson and family, the Bishop Reverend Jones, First Nazarene's Ministerial Staff, the sick, shut-in, and bereaved. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. My brothers and sisters, if it's God's will, see you Wednesday night, 6 p.m. for Bible study. Until then, please continue to be encouraged. This is Sister Sharon Britt reporting from Station FNBC for the Nazarene News. Back to the pulpit to acknowledge our guests. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on and give God some praise, amen. We thank God for this another day. Those, again, as was mentioned earlier, watching online, uh, if you haven't done so, we want you to hit that share button, amen. Some of y'all won't share it because the comments is off and y'all wanted to get on there, be nosy and all that stuff, but you can still share, amen. Uh, you know, and, uh, and um, invite somebody into uh, worship with us amen and uh and we give god the praise if you are here uh, sharing with us for the first time this morning you're visiting with the nazarene church we want you to uh stand at this time we don't want to embarrass you we just want to recognize you if this is your first time sharing with the nazarene church uh we're going to ask that you stand at this time if there's any visitors amen with us on this morning amen amen come on and give god some praise amen Good morning, Nazarene. Amen. Amen. And Happy New Year to each and every uh, one of you. We give God the praise for uh, this another year that he has allowed us to see. Uh, and uh, as the choir has sung this morning, it was no goodness of our own. Uh, but it's by his grace and his mercy that he has allowed us to be here. And we ought to give God a praise for another year. Amen. <laughs> So much has uh, is, has happened, you know. This is why uh, we have been preaching um, so uh, so hard out of this book of Revelations. Uh, so much has happened uh, in such a short period of time that none of us know the day nor the hour uh, when the Son of Man is going to call us and when He shall appear. Uh, that's why it behooves us to always be ready. Amen. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, "Be ready." Amen. I'm going to talk about something in the sermon that I hope is going to help us, uh, you know, in this new year uh, that uh, we've been focusing on the, some of the wrong things, amen. 
and uh, it, it was so appropriate if you listen to the intro of uh, she, uh, our media, Sister Sharon, she didn't know where I was going this morning, but if you look at the intro of that uh, clip that she played, uh, it talked about not focusing on things around us, but focusing on Jesus Christ. I guarantee you, if we start putting him back at the center, amen, things will start, amen, working in our favor. And the problem is we have took, taken him out of the center uh, and uh, we have put everything else uh, in the center, amen. But if you put Jesus back in the center, amen, uh, things will uh, start working out in our favor. And so, so much has transpired during this uh, short period of time, uh, ending one year, going into a, uh, another year. And so, uh, if we ever needed to pray before, uh, we need to pray now. Uh, Deacon Cunt is going to come with uh, some announcements, and then uh, we'll come back and share a few more things uh, that we're planning for the new year. Praise the Lord, saints. We thank the Lord for allowing us to see another year. We want to keep Sister Loretta Tidwell in prayer. Sister Loretta Tidwell, she had um, serious surgery on this past week. The, um, her son and daughter uh, wanted to hold up on the visitation and phone calls, but as of yesterday, the daughter called and said that um, the saints can now call her mother and um, even visit uh, Sister Loretta Tidwell. She's in, the, she's in Lady of Lords Hospital right here in Camden. So keep Sister Loretta Tidwell family in prayer. And also our own Sister Belinda Barksdale, she's here today. Her mother passed this particular uh, week. This week her mother passed, Sister Barbara Ann Barksdale. And the funeral service for uh, Sister Belinda's mother will be in this room. They will be renting our facility here at the First Nazarene Baptist Church and her mother's funeral will be in this room on Thursday, the 5th of January, with the viewing being between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., and the service at 11. And if you're not working, if you're available, we want to come by to support Sister Belinda Barksdale uh, during that particular service. And then many of us, many of us have heard already and have seen on social media and telephones and all that, that our own of uh, Reverend Bryce Jones passed yesterday. Reverend Bryce Jones passed yesterday. And we just want to keep the bishop and the rest of that family in prayer. It's very devastating uh, to them. The bishop would have been here this morning, but the bishop was out preaching. And he said that's where he's getting his strength is when he's in that pulpit bringing forth God's word. And just, um, just the other day, I even spoke with um, Brother um, Minister Bryce and he was preparing something to thank the First Nazarene Baptist Church for all the cards and all the prayers and everything that went up, uh, you know, for, for, for Reverend Bryce uh, Jones. But the family wants to thank us uh, at this time. And the bishop, when he's able to do so, the bishop will come back and thank the congregation also. And we know just how much the bishop had poured into Reverend Bryce uh, Jones. As of this morning, there are no arrangements that have been made um, as of this morning, but as soon as those arrangements are made, we will let the office know and we'll get that information out so that we can support that particular family. May God bless you and keep you. Amen. Again, we, Deacon Hunt said we want to certainly continue to keep uh, all families that are going through bereavement, and uh, certainly our, our bishop and the Jones uh, family. Uh, our circle has been broken here in Nazarene, amen, but we know that God is still in control. I said we know that he is still in control of all things, amen. And one thing God doesn't do is he doesn't make a mistake, amen. He doesn't make a mistake, and so uh, we want to continue to lift uh, that family up and uh, continue to encourage on one another. Again, this is, uh, you know, we, going into this new year, we don't have time for foolishness. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, grandmama said it and the saying is so true. Life is too short. Amen. And uh, it, it behooves us as believers to love on one another while we have the opportunity. Amen. And so uh, uh, if there's any alts or things in our hearts, we ought to go ahead and, uh, and 
let it go. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, let it go. Amen. Let it go. Uh, let it go because the next moment is not promised to any of us. Amen. But we still give God the praise even in the midst of this. Come on, let's give God a praise. Amen. Amen. Again, Nazarene, the Lord has, I said on last night, the Lord has uh, tremendously favored us uh, in this past year, and we're looking for him to do the same uh, in 2023. Uh, God has blessed us, um, as we know, every year uh, for the last now six years, uh, we have gathered um, in the month of January uh, for us to have our church-wide retreat. It is the time that we come together as a church uh, for us to uh, cast vision um, for the year, uh, for you to uh, to understand uh, uh, what's in pastor's head and, uh, and for me to have an opportunity to articulate that from my head out my mouth uh, and uh, for you to get information. Uh, a lot of times we go around and we are and we say we uninformed, but we're uninformed because we have not been in the place to get the information. And so I would encourage us to, us to come uh, and get the information so you don't have to be uninformed and everybody is on the same page. Uh, you know, I get a little concerned when people say, I don't know what's going on. Uh, and uh, we have shared uh, information and we've, uh, uh, we've had uh, dialogue and, we've, uh, and we gave opportunity for questions to be asked and answered. And so this is the opportunity for the church-wide retreat. It's not only to receive instruction, but also to ask the questions that you may have uh, as we move into 2023. Uh, and the Lord has blessed us. We have been able to move, amen, uh, 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 without a whole lot of chaos and chaotic, amen, this, amen. Uh, but we want everybody to be on the same uh, page. The, the, the hard thing to do with... I want to just not say, I used to say with the black church, but it ain't just the black church, it's the church in general that trying to move everybody uh, in, in the same direction, amen. Uh, when you have some people going this way, some people going that way, others going this way. Uh, but, uh, you know, once again, we're going to try to uh, move everybody in the same direction because, amen, if we can get on one accord, like they did on the day of Pentecost, amen. I wish I had the church this morning, Amen. Uh, if the Bible said they were all in one place and all on one accord and the Holy Spirit fell down, amen. And so uh, that's what we want to attempt to do again on this year. So we invite you to come out. We always start uh, with uh, a worship experience because anything we do, we ought to worship God in it. And so that Friday night uh, meeting, uh, we will be in worship on that Friday night. Great preacher, Reverend Dr. Charles Goodman. Uh, from Augusta, Georgia, would be here with us uh, to share a word. We have had, uh, the last six years of us doing church-wide retreat, we have had phenomenal preachers that have come in and encouraged the body of Christ of First Nazarene. Amen. And we give God the praise. Phenomenal preachers. And so we uh, in, in invite you to come on that Friday at 7 uh, um, p.m. Uh, and then that Saturday at 10 a.m., we will have uh, uh, first the, the workshop piece of it uh, to empower us, and then we will have the informational sec uh, session after that. So we certainly encourage you to come in uh, to uh, get the, the information. Uh, and as also we've done uh, for the last several years, uh, we have tried to always start the year off with prayer and end the year off with prayer. And so for every morning at 5 a.m. Uh, during the month of January, uh, we will be on our teleconference line. Uh, and uh, we might even go uh, through our Facebook Live as well uh, this year uh, to have prayer. So we encourage you to dial in uh, at 5 a.m. in the morning. Uh, you know, and as the Lord leads us, we don't know. Uh, we may be on there for five minutes. We may be on there for 30 minutes. We may be on there for 20 minutes. Amen. As the Lord leads us throughout the month. Uh, we're going to be praying for certain things because we want God to be in the midst of us uh, during 2023. Amen. The enemy is ever busy. Amen. Let me say, I said the enemy is ever busy. Amen. And if we ever needed to bind together as believers in prayer, this is the season for us to do it. And so I encourage us to do it on day 31. Uh, we will come and we will meet here in the sanctuary uh, and we will pray uh, and, 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 uh, uh, on that day. Uh, as we close out those uh, days of prayer. And so uh, we pray that you will meet us on tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. on the conference line as we seek the face of God uh, for what he wants to do uh, in uh, this year. 
Uh, we had a wonderful uh, time on last night in worship. Amen. Right, and we're back here this morning. Amen. Amen. I was a little concerned this morning. I had to gargle myself with some tea and some lemon and some honey because I lost my voice last night. Uh, Deacon, I was uh, drinking tea. And, and it's just like, a, it's just like a, a, a black folks. You know, we get out at, you know, New Year's Eve service and we go find some chicken. Amen. So I went out, <laughs> got our service last night, and I, and I found some chicken, and I shouldn't did that, amen. That was the wrong move to do, amen. Uh, and so, uh, but we give God the praise, amen. And we, uh, we are here, and we thank God uh, for each and every one of you on this morning. I want us also, uh, let us continue, amen. We're going to be sharing the church at the church-wide retreat uh, where we're at with that uh, one more mortgage. We want to continue to give. I asked on last night uh, for those who can and will uh, at some point during this month uh, to make a sacrificial first fruit offering uh, unto the Lord. Amen. Uh, not telling you what to give, whatever the Lord lays on your heart to do. Uh, I know what I'm going to do, uh, but whatever the Lord lays on your heart to do, we want you to do uh, at some point during this month. If you can do that today, uh, God be praised. Uh, but it is a sacrificial offering as first fruits. Uh, and we want you to do that as we've done in previous years, and we uh, believe that the Lord will certainly bless you. Amen? Amen. And we give God the praise. Uh, this is the time we want to prepare our hearts and our minds as we celebrate the first communion of this new year. We ought to give God the praise for his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. Amen. And so I ask us, let us turn our attention off of our problems and turn our attention on the problem solver, solver, amen, on this morning. Would he devote That sacred head for such a word as I. Come on, sing. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. The burdens of my heart rolled away. It was then by faith I received my sight, and now I am. All the day But drops of grief Can never repay The debt of love Self away is all that I can do. Come on, lift your voice at the cross, at the cross where I first saw. The burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith 
I receive my side and now I am happy oh y'all don't mind standing and singing that with me oh at the cross at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart you rolled away oh it was there by faith I received my sight oh and I know that we're masked up, but let me hear you say without the music. At the cross, at the cross, where I first, where I first saw the light and the burdens, and the burdens of my heart, my heart they rolled Receive my sight, my sight, and now, and now, I am happy all the day. As you take your seat, the musician just going to play a song. Before the cross, there was the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus is in the garden. He is praying because he's about to transpire. He has a conversation with the Father. He says, Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. That was his humanity that was talking. But then his deity kicked in and says, not my will, but thy will be done. Leads from the garden. He's carried up the cross called Calvary. He hangs there to die for sinners like you and I. He doesn't deserve death, but he dies because he want to make sure that we have the right to the tree of life. So he relives what he had told his disciples. He says, the bread represents my body that is going to be broken on the cross of the Calvary and he breaks it. He says, I need you to understand that although my body has to be broken, there is no remission of sin unless there's the shedding of blood. Takes the cup and said, this is my blood that is shed on the cross of Calvary. Reverend Cosby, I'm going to pray. Our Father and our God, in this sweet, adorable, matchless, wonderful name of Jesus, as we come to this table on this first Sunday of the new year, we just thank you and praise you for what you've done on Calvary for us. First and foremost, we seek forgiveness of all of our sins and shortcomings, be it word, thought, deed, or motive, 
washing us, purges and cleanses of all unrighteousness for your name's sake. And then we ask you to take these elements and take them from a carnal use to a spiritual use. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, I receive my sight. Oh, and now I am happy all the day. Come on, say it again. At the cross. Again, the Bible says, on the night Jesus was betrayed, took bread broken, said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Eat and remember it of me. After the same manner, he said, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. Drink and remember it of me. If there's anyone for the right hand of fellowship, we're going to ask that you come at this time. God of praise for his blood. Eh? Right, we come to prepare our hearts for, um, for some of us is the first offering of the year. Some of us is the second offering because we came last night and we, some of us is our first tithe of the year. Amen. Uh, how many of the Lord has blessed you uh, in spite of you? Amen. I'm just talking, maybe talking. I say he's blessed us in spite of us. Uh, so let us come and let us be a blessing back to him. Amen. On today. Trustees are coming. Because uh, the Bible says he loves a what? He loves a what? A cheer forgiver. Amen. Those that are watching online, amen, you can give electronically on this morning. Amen. Through our means of cash app, give and fly on our website. Uh, uh, let us be a blessing. Amen. Let us, if you are not a, a tither, uh, haven't been a tither, amen, I encourage you though, this year uh, to, uh, I used to tell uh, uh, my church in Chester uh, to, you know, put TT on your envelope. Try and tither. The Bible says, try me now. Amen. Uh, and see what I not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. Amen. I, I guarantee you, if you try him, he'll come through. Amen. And he'll prove himself. Amen. Let us stand as we prepare our hearts to give.
Again, God, we say thank you for this moment and opportunity to give. We realize that giving is a part of worship. So now we come to worship you in our giving. Now, Father, we ask you to bless the gift and bless the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. some praise. Amen. Again in Revelations chapter 14. Because the Lord is my shepherd I have everything I need He lets me rest in the meadow's grass Leads me beside the quiet streams He restores my failing health And He helps me to do what honors Him the most that's why I'm saved. That's why I'm saved. That's why I'm saved. Safe in His arms. Because the 
Lord is my shepherd I have everything that I need He lets me rest in the meadow's grass Leads me beside the quiet streams he restores my failing health And he helps me to do what honors him the most That's why I'm saved That's why I'm saved That's why I'm saved Saved So when the storm, when the storm, when the storms of life, life is raging, and the billows, and the billows, the billows. of every storm and every trial. Hey, hallelujah. That although the storms of this life will rage, we thank you that we got safety. Hey, God.
I'm glad He shall hide me Regardless of what it looks like Regardless of what it may sound like He shall hurt me When the storms are raging And the wind blows He shall hurt me Say Revelations chapter 14 verse 1 and I looked and lo a lamb stood on the mount of Sinai and with him an hundred forty and four thousand having his father's name written in their foreheads and heard a voice from heaven as a voice of many waters and as a voice of great thunder and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps and they sung as it was a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty four thousand which were redeemed from the earth these that are which they are which were not defiled with women for they are virgins these are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and unto the Lamb. In their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. For the few moments we have on this morning, I want to talk from the thought we weathered the storm. That's what I want to talk about. We weathered the storm. For those that have been following along with us as we have been navigating through this book of Revelation, we've seen just two chapters ago uh, experience a dark and depressing and discouraging period. Yeah, I've been talking about the devil, the antichrist, and the false prophet. We have witnessed the deaths of depravity as man abandons his creator to worship the devil through the false Christ. And as we enter this 14th chapter, the scene changes once again. Chapter 14 is like a glorious rainbow after the fierce storm. God takes the brush of his grace and repaints the landscape of the revelation. And then he gives us a breath of fresh air. Only God can do that. Only God can take that which is horrible beyond words and turn it into a thing of glory. And that is just what he does in this passage, in these verses. This passage, we are allowed to get a little glimpse of heavenly glory. We are allowed to once again see the Lamb of God. He is the theme of the book. He is the center of attention. He is center stage in these verses. Let me pause there for a moment and suggest that it will be a blessing in this new year if we could figure out how to keep Jesus at the center of everything that we do in our lives as individual in the life of the church. So many have become so consumed with the things that have no lasting value and we have turned our attention off of Jesus and onto the things of this world. We live in a world that is full of distractions. 
distractions in our homes, on our jobs, and even distractions in the church. In fact, if I took a poll of what I preached on last Sunday, most wouldn't even be able to tell me. But I guarantee if you tell me what you saw on social media last week, because our focus is on the wrong things. And although we gather in the sacred place that we call the sanctuary on a weekly basis, our bodies are here, but our minds are often somewhere else. Uh, um, uh, there was a story that was told, and I believe I shared this before, there was a story that was told of a young lady uh, that came to the pastor and she said uh, that she was leaving the church. And the pastor asked the young lady, uh, why was she leaving the church? And her response was, every time I come to church, I see people gossiping, not paying attention to the preacher. They're on their phone texting, talking and laughing while worship is going on. And the pastor said to the young lady, he said, I hear you, I get it, I understand. Um, but before you leave, can I ask you to do one thing? He filled up a glass to the top of the rim and he told her to walk around the church uh, without spilling any of the water. And she looked puzzled, she did it. Uh, and, and when she got done, the pastor asked her, uh, uh, while she was walking with the water, did she see anyone gossiping? Did she see anyone uh, on their phone texting? She said, no. Did she see anyone talking and laughing? She said, she said Pastor, no, I didn't see any of that. She, she stopped the pastor and she said, Pastor, there's a reason I didn't see any of that. She said, the reason I didn't see any of that or anybody do any of that is because I was so focused on not spilling the water uh, that my attention was on the glass and not on them. And that's the same way we should be when we come to worship. Our attention should be focused on Jesus and we're not distracted by the things that are around us. And you must understand that the trick of the enemy in these last days is to keep our focus off of Jesus. Jesus and the focus on the things that are around us. But let me remind you of what uh, of the book of Hebrews chapter two, 12, verse 1 and 2 declares to us. Look, look at what Hebrews, it may be on the screen, uh, chapter 12, verse 1 through 2 says. It says, wherefore seeing we are also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Y'all remember this familiar passage of scripture. Let us lay aside every weight and sin of which doeth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Here is the shout on this morning. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set at the right hand of the throne of God. I want to submit to you on today that if you learn how to keep your eyes on Jesus and lay aside your burdens that are trying to weigh you down, despite what the enemy tried to bring your way, you'll continue to give God the glory, you'll continue to give him the praise, you'll continue to have a hallelujah in your smile and your soul because you're looking to Jesus and not the things that are around us. Look at the text, look at the text, look at the text in the verse, in this text we are met again with the 144,000. Uh, they, they are Jewish evangelists who, who were selected and sealed, you remember we read it in chapter 7. These men have preached the gospel of the kingdom during the darker days of the tribulation. They were persecuted by the Antichrist. But they persevered and they were preserved by God. At some point during the tribulation, uh, when uh, they have served their purpose, God will allow the 144,000 to be killed by the Antichrist. These men will join their Redeemer, the Lamb of God, in his glory in heaven. And that is the scene that I want us to investigate for a few moments and for the next few weeks. These men have weathered a terrible storm here on the earth. And now for them, at least the storm is over. And, and they are home with the Lamb. And so the text suggests to us on this morning 
that they are a rescued army. Uh, they are protected by God. When we first meet this group of men, we meet them again in Revelation chapter 7, verse 3 and 4. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 7, verse 3 and 4, it's saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we all have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed and there were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. These men have been sealed by God and they have been protected by him through the darkest days of the tribulation. Hundreds of millions, perhaps even billions of people have died. But these men have been protected through it all because they have been sealed by God. The Bible says that the earth will be stained red with blood of holy martyrs, but these men will be protected through it all. Satan will hunt them. He will harass them. He will uh, be powerless to kill them because they have been sealed by God. In other words, they have his name in their foreheads. I need y'all to catch this on this morning. And they are untouchable. Please understand, when Satan marks his people, they are headed to hell. But when God seals his servants, they are bound for glory. Let me say it again. When Satan marks his people, they are bound for hell. And we just read in chapter 13, when, the, we, when those... Uh, that uh, have not had a relationship with Jesus Christ receives the mark of the beast. They are headed to hell. I want us to remind us that we read in Revelation 13 how Satan marks his people. In the tribulation, he will mark them with the mark of the beast. But even before we get to the tribulation, even today, he is marking his people. He marks their bodies, their hearts, and their minds with the scars of their sins. Satan marks all those who follow him. And that's why it's easy for people to kill someone in cold blooded because they have been marked by Satan. Some may argue, brother pastor, it is not a spiritual thing. It is a mental illness. Uh, but I will argue it is a spiritual illness. Uh, they have allowed the demonic to enter into their minds. Uh, it is the demonic that can go into a supermarket a school or a football game the church and kill innocent people for no reason it is the demonic that will lie and slander and attack a person simply because they don't like him and Satan have marked these folks but on the other hand God has sealed those that are in a relationship with him he places his seals he labels them his own possession. In other words, when we have gotten saved, the Spirit of God took up residence in our heart and He sealed Himself in us uh, and He sealed Satan out of us. Uh, and that's why I want to encourage somebody in 2023 you got to keep the door closed and stop allowing Satan to step into your house. Uh, somebody touch your neighbor and say, Keep your door closed. Uh, I'm not talking about your physical house I'm talking about your spiritual house you ought to close your heart and your mind and your soul and your spirit to the things of the enemy and in 2023 you ought to give the enemy an eviction notice and let him know that you are no longer welcome here because you have been sealed and protected by God and I wonder am I talking to anybody here that says I've left my sorrows and my pain in 2022 uh, I left my hurt and my heartaches in 2022 uh, and I come to serve notice to the enemy uh, that although you may try to get into my house uh, I put a lock on my door uh, and I put a sign on the outside uh, that says you cannot enter uh, and every now and then you ought to remind the enemy uh, that he don't own where you live, uh, that your mortgage has already been paid on the cross of Calvary. Uh, every now and then you ought to remind him uh, that Jesus paid it all. Uh, all 
to him I owe. Sin has left a chrism stain, but he washed it white as snow. And every time the enemy tried to knock on your door and remind you of where you've been, you ought to remind him that Jesus paid the price. Oh, he knocked on your door and remind you that you were in sin, uh, but you remind him uh, that the wages of sin is death, uh, but the gift of who am I preaching to uh, is eternal life. He reminds you of your past, uh, but you remind him of what the word of God says. Uh, I forget those things uh, which are behind me, uh, and I press towards the mark uh, of the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus, when he reminds you of what you've done. You remind him that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. You ought to put, you ought to put a notice on your house that the enemy has been evicted. I wish somebody could just give God a 30 second praise and let the enemy know that he's been evicted. You've been evicted off of my mind. You're evicted off of my children. You're evicted off of my home. You're evicted out of my job. Somebody shout, the enemy is. He's evicted. Here it is, here it is. Here it is. The Bible says, that these men, uh, here it is, here it is, Williams, here it is, Jacobs, here it is, Deacon Hunt, here it is, uh, Deacon Percy, here it is, Money, here, here it is, Deacon Hubbard, here it is, here it is. They have been protected and sealed by God. Here it is. They have the mark on their foreheads. They have the mark of the name of Jesus Christ. And here's the problem. Some of us, I, I said this before, you know, we get into the thing in, of name dropping. We go to places and we want to drop names of who we know. And, and we believe if we drop the name of who we know, it's going to get us entrance in a certain places. But, 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 but there, there, there's one place you can't name drop. You, 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 you can't name drop when you get into a confrontation with the enemy. Because the enemy says, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But he turned around and said, who are, who are you? Here it is, the only name that has power to give us entrance into those things that have already been promised to us is the name of Jesus. That's why the Bible declares that at that name, every knee has got to bow and every tongue has got to confess that he is Lord. I guarantee to you, if you start walking in 2023 and start using a name that has power, you'll start seeing doors start open for you. If you start using a name that has power, you'll start seeing blessings come unto you. If you start using a name that has power, you'll see state and start backing up off of you. Because the only name that has power and authority is the name of. The Bible says, the Bible says these men are, they're sealed and protected by God. But then the text also says uh, they are also preserved. Somebody shout preserved. They're preserved by God. These men arrive on Mount Zion. Uh, they, they are just as many. Watch this. There were when they were sealed back in chapter 7. God sealed 144,000. And when we look at the text, 144,000 Stand with the Lamb in glory. 
There, there, are, there are not 143,999,000. There There are 144,000. And watch this. He brought in just as many as he called out. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it here. He, he brought in just as many as he called out. The same is true for all of God's saints. According to his word, we have been sealed until the day of redemption. We are also told that Jesus will not lose a single one of those given to him by his father. Look, look, look at what it says in John chapter 6, verse 37 through 40. Look, it may be on, it's on the screen there. Uh, John chapter 6, verse 37 to 40. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Look, look at the words of Jesus. For I come down from heaven, not to do my own will. Y'all catch this here. But the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which have sent me, that of all which he have given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. In other words, those who are saved are as sure for heaven as they were already there. Jesus gives eternal life and eternal security to every single person who trusts him for their salvation. And when the roll is called in glory, not a single person will be missing. When the family gathers for the marriage supper of the Lamb, there will not be an empty seat at the table. God will bring all, somebody shout all, of his children home. And here the Bible says in the text that not only are they preserved, but they are presented to God. We are told that these men meet the lamb on Mount Zion. Uh, this is an ancient name for the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is referred to Mount Zion at least 21 times in the word of God. And some commentaries uh, believe that John is referring to the earthly city of Jerusalem. They think we are seeing a vision of the coming millennium when Jesus will rule on the earth for 1,000 years. I just happen to believe that we are seeing a heavenly scene here. These men have served their time. They have fulfilled their mission. And they have been brought into the presence of the Almighty. Uh, verse 3 talks about the heavenly sink. And verse 5 shows them standing before the throne of God in glory. These men, in other words, have been rescued out of the world that has gone mad. And they are home in the presence of the Father and the Lamb of God. I need us to note, I, I don't know about you, but I, I give God praise. I praise him because the reality is there is a better place waiting on the people of God. Uh, if this world was heaven as some groups claim, I wouldn't want to look at it at all the foolishness that we have to deal with down here. We have bitterness and anger. We have hatred and horror. We have death and disease. We have trials and troubles. We have pain and problems. We have faults and failures. We have sorrows and sadness. We have carnality and carelessness. We have grief and greed. We have jealousy and envious. And, 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 and there has to be a better place waiting on the children of God. And so the reason we show up and the reason we work Worship. And the reason we give God the praise and the reason we give him glory is because we are living to live again. I need to talk to somebody that in 2023 you have a declaration in your mind that I'm not just living but 
I'm living to live again. Uh, I'm living because there is something uh, that is greater that is coming after this. Uh, and the reason I can go through the storms in my life, uh, the reason I can go through hell in high water, uh, the reason I can have tears rolling down my eyes, uh, but I can still declare to my own self uh, that weeping may endure for a night, uh, but joy is going to come in the morning. Uh, it's because I know uh, that there is something that is coming uh, after this. Uh, and when you begin to look at the text, uh, we see that this 144,000, uh, they have weathered the storm. Uh, they have stood faithful uh, to what God has commissioned him to do uh, and God has sealed their place uh, in the kingdom of God uh, and I know the Jehovah Witness says uh, that there's only 144,000 uh, that is going to heaven uh, but the Bible says uh, that when Jesus came uh, and he was born in the manger uh, and he walked 33 years on this earth uh, and he went up a cross called Calvary uh, and he bled and died uh, that he did not just die uh, for the Jews uh, and he did not just die uh, for those uh, that was already right with him uh, but he died for a sinner uh, like you and I uh, and because he died uh, I now have a right uh, to the tree of life uh, so he is not just talking to uh, the 144,000 uh, that are in the scripture. Uh, can I tell you who, who else uh, he's talking to? Uh, he's talking to the liar uh, that repented of their sins uh, and said, Create in me uh, a clean heart, O oh God, uh, and renew in me uh, a right spirit. Uh, he's talking to the alcoholic. Uh, that turned their backs uh, but came to the repentant knowledge uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, he's talking to uh, the drug addict that says uh, I no longer want to live this way uh, but I need Jesus uh, to come into my life uh, and the reason why I know uh, he is still in the saving business uh, because the scripture tells us uh, that when he was on the cross uh, there were two thieves that were next to him uh, and one thief began to mock him uh, and the thief said to him uh, that if you are the son uh, of the living God uh, you ought to save yourself uh, but there was another thief uh, that had some common sense uh, and he says to Jesus uh, I believe uh, that you are the Christ uh, the son of the living God uh, and he says, uh, Lord, here in my, uh, can you save me? Uh, and Jesus looks at that thief uh, and he does not tell him, uh, tomorrow you'll be with me. Uh, in paradise, uh, he does not tell him, uh, you got to wait to. Uh, you got to wait to 2024. Uh, he says to him. Uh, Today thou uh, shall be with me uh, in paradise. Uh, and I want to encourage somebody uh, that if you learn uh, how to do as Romans uh, 8.28 says, uh, that if thou shalt confess uh, with thy mouth uh, the Lord Jesus uh, and believe uh, in thy heart uh, that God uh, has raised Jesus uh, from the dead uh, then thou shalt be saved uh, and I wish I had some saved uh, sanctified uh, filled with the power uh, of the Holy Ghost saints uh, that can lift your hands uh, and give God the praise uh, that you weathered uh, the storm uh, and what is the evidence uh, that you weathered the storm uh, you're still here uh, giving God the glory uh, the enemy should have took you out uh, a long time ago uh, but you're still here uh, 
giving God the praise. Uh, you should have lost your mind uh, in the midst of what you've been through. Uh, but somebody shout, uh, I'm still here uh, giving God the glory. Uh, if you knew my story uh, of what I've been through uh, in 2022, uh, you will look at me uh, and try to figure out uh, how did I survive? Uh, I survived COVID. Uh, I survived bereavement. Uh, I survived heartaches. Uh, I just survived tears. Uh, I survived pain. Uh, if you knew my story, uh, I survived uh, folks that left me. Uh, and the reason uh, I'm still praising her, uh, because if it had uh, not have been her, uh, for the Lord uh, who was on my side uh, somebody uh, on this New Year's Day uh, ought to praise him uh, that he's kept you uh, in the midst uh, of this all uh, and that's why uh, we ought to be able uh, to still sing uh, that old hymn uh, Amazing Grace uh, How Sweet the Sound uh, that saved uh, a wretch like me I once was lost but now I found was blind but now I see through many dangers toes and snares I've already come it was grace that brought me safe this far I need some saints to open your mouth and shout grace grace uh, for my journey uh, grace uh, for my weariness uh, grace uh, for my loneliness uh, grace uh, is keeping me uh, say yes uh, say yes I said grace I said grace I'm praising him not on my own merits but I'm praising him because of his grace and his mercy brought me through I'm living each moment because of you I want to praise and thank you too because of your grace your grace your grace your grace We weathered, we weathered the storm. You ought to be like the 144,000 that Christ has sealed. It's covered. Saints, be encouraged. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, the storm is passing over. That the storm is because you have been sealed and not only sealed for a day but you have been sealed to the day of redemption in my soul and let us journey on Though the night is long And I'm still far from home Thanks be to God The morning light appears The storm is passing over Storm is passing over. Somebody say bye bye to him. Storm is passing over. Hallelujah. Come on, can we say it again? Oh, encourage my soul. 
Come on, encourage somebody. Let us journey on. I know you're going through heartaches, though the night is gone. And I'm still far from home. This is the part I like. Thanks be to the morning light of peace. Come on, say bye bye to it. The storm is passing over. The storm is. Say the storm is. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. standing. We don't want to take for granted that everybody here is saved. Everybody has a relationship with Jesus Christ. You are not like the 144,000 if you have not made the decision to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You are not sealed. The only ones that are sealed is those that have made a decision to be in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now let me help you out because some believe that once you become saved, you know, you, it's some magical thing that happens, a snap of the finger, you just become perfect. No, we are imperfect people that serve a perfect God. We are sinners saved by grace. And we are work in progress. Every day we die daily. Christ fills us. He cleans us. We're going to mess up. We're going to make some mistakes. But as long as we learn how to come to Christ with a repenting heart. Our salvation is never lost. If you're here on today, you have never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Don't go into this year 2023 without a relationship with Jesus Christ. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there's one come. Maybe you are saved and the enemy has convinced you to get off a track and you feel him pulling on you. Come on, meet us here at this front. If you're afraid to walk, just look at your neighbor and say, can you walk with me? They'll walk with you. Come on. Maybe 
you're going in this year and saying, listen, I don't have a church home. I need to be under the word of God. I need a place to call home. You can come. You can come. Said the storm is. Come on. Oh, I straight away he's calling you back you need a place to call home come on passing over the storm is passing over the storm is passing over hallelujah hallelujah by the word on today. you uh, to uh, get online, amen, to, uh, to uh, pray with us, amen, at 5 a.m., set your alarms, amen, <laughs> at 5 a.m. to pray with us. Um, also this week, amen, I'm, I'm pinning out, amen, I'm, I'm, I am going to, a few things I'm going to do, amen, uh, if the Lord says the same, the Lord's will. Again, we want to be an encouragement to Sister Belinda on this Thursday. So I, I will maneuver back uh, for this. But this week, amen, um, I don't mind saying that. I've, I've learned to stop feel, feeling guilty uh, about saying uh, the pastor is going to take a mental break. Amen. You know, oh, I need to, uh, this, week, uh, this week, amen, normally me and my family, we will be somewhere this week we, because of our new addition. We can't do that. Uh, but... Uh, we would normally be somewhere, but uh, this week, pastor's taking a mental break, amen. Uh, and so I I, I, uh, I I normally try to hide that from people, amen, and they folks still try to find, you know, uh, where, but I'm telling y'all, so if you call my phone and I don't answer, it's because pastor's on mental break, amen. Uh, y'all quiet, amen. We We have a very capable office, amen. Wave your hand, Sister Cher. She was, she was out. She was under the She had some. She's back. Uh, we have a very capable, amen, uh, uh, very capable office. Amen. Got a very capable. Y'all, all y'all deacons stand up. Amen. Stand up. If you're a deacon, stand up. Amen. amen. Y'all see all, y'all see these, y'all see these men. We got very capable deacons. Amen. Amen. Uh, y'all call them. Amen. Amen, amen. Uh, but uh, pastor is going to be. I'm going to take a mental break this week. Amen. Uh, I will be on the phone line. Amen. Lord says the same. We've been praying. Amen. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, I'm no good to you. Amen. If I'm broken down. Amen. Amen. Uh, and I'm broken. So uh, we're going to take this. Amen. Week to uh, refuel and replenish. Amen. Amen. Uh, he don't. He don't know it yet. I'm telling him right now, Wednesday night, Reverend Collins be going to preach. So y'all come out. It's Wednesday night. Amen. Reverend Collins going to preach. So y'all come 
on out because if you if you if you can only come because you got you you connected to personality you don't you know you you need to check your salvation if you can only log in because amen and i've been learned a long time amen i ain't a lot of y'all favorite preachers you just put up with me amen <laughs> and no i know you you, you you amen i said it last night you know this has been a great amen this has been a great five years amen and i give god the praise even even in the ups and downs we thank god amen i thank god for the nazarene church amen great people amen and so uh we want you to do that amen and then uh we give god the praise all right uh let's give god a prayer our choir amen good thank you amen. temple band god bless you amen Let's continue to keep our minister music emeritus in prayer, Sister Wanda. We want to keep her lifted and continue to uh, keep our bishop and that family on your prayer list on, of this week. Amen. All hearts and minds are clear. Let's stand. say this uh this year I, I i said this and i'll share it again during the church-wide retreat but we need some help um i spent the last couple of years we were focusing on our seniors and i think we've done a phenomenal job amen uh with our seniors amen sister uh, dawson and sister sites done a phenomenal job with our joy ministry you ought to give God a praise for that, amen, uh, for them, amen. Thank you. We were, they did sight and sound. We were able to raise some money uh, to even make sure the tickets were not that expensive and things of that sort. Uh, other, every almost every month, amen, they had something going on. And so we did a wonderful job uh, with our scene. This year, we want to, we, we have, Many don't think we have young people, but we have a whole lot of young people, amen, in this church, amen. And uh, we don't want them sitting idle uh, this year. And so we need some help, amen. We need some help. Uh, and so we're going to be calling uh, together some people to try to help us, uh, you know, uh, plan some things for our young people out, uh, for this year, amen. Uh, and uh, some people, you know, we got Sister Dez and Sister Sykes. But they, we work, we work sometimes, we work the same people so hard. Y'all quiet, amen. Uh, and, and you're gifted in that area and we need, and they need your help, amen. Uh, and so we don't overwork them, amen. And so we're going to plan uh, for our uh, young people. And then we got a whole nother generation that is com coming up, amen, amen. Uh, we got babies around here, amen. And when you got babies around here, amen, that's a good sign, amen. And so we want to get some things in place this year for our young people, amen. Our, our cry room, they do a phenomenal job back there, amen, uh, in the cry. Let's give God a thank y'all, amen, thank you so much. But we want to make sure, amen, that we are, uh, we are, we're meeting that need. Is that all right? So if you, you if you gifted in that area, keep it in mind. Call the office, let us know so we we can put your name on the list. God, we thank you. We praise you for what our hearts have felt today. Our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. We thank you for this year. We believe in it for to be a year of blessings, year of prosperity, year of favor. 
We bind the hand of the enemy that we're trying to distraught and crumble and divide the body of Christ on this year. Draw us closer together, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Now as we leave from this place and never from thy presence, may your peace, love, and joy continue to be with us. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide now, henceforth, and forever. took pictures uh, last week and did not get them, I'll call the office this week and they'll make arrangements for you to make sure that you uh, get your pictures.